There we go. Look at that. All right. So again, hi and welcome. Thank you for being part of this sacred ceremony um, where we've chosen to come together as a virtual community to intentionally release all that we no longer want to carry with us into um, the year ahead. Heavens knows uh, who could have predicted that 2020 would have been so chaotic and uh, really, really crazy <laughs> and challenging. What, right? Who would have known we were dealing with such, going to be dealing with this frightening global pandemic that continues still to impact every aspect of our lives every day? Um, all the issues around racial hatred and injustice, violence, <clears throat> deep divisiveness, especially here in the United States environmental and weather events and political upheaval, unlike we've never seen in our lifetimes, and I'm sure most of us hope we will never see again. So perhaps this year, more than any other um, in our lifetimes, we're just weary, right? And we're ready to let go of both our whatever individual um, energy, we're ready to release grief, loss, uncertainty, you know, sadness, pain, all of it. Um, and also the collective energy. And that being said, we've also gathered to step fully and intentionally into 2021, right? A year opening before us that's filled with new potential and new possibility. So this afternoon or this evening, we'll take time to tap into the deep wishes of our hearts and our souls to envision the life and the world we wanna create for ourselves and for the generations to come. It's my intention this evening to create a sacred, sacred space within which we can drop out of our daily lives, out of our egoic minds, busy egoic minds, right? Filled with so many to-do lists and so much worry and judgment and fear. In this sacred space, we'll step into a time of contemplation and renewal and utilize the transformative magic of music and prayer, journaling and meditation, and of course, our conscious intention to release and co-create together. We'll quiet our minds and our bodies so that we can connect with the deep place of knowing that resides deep within each of us. We'll allow ourselves to be guided by our higher selves and our spiritual support teams to tap into the well of knowing and love that's deep within each of us. So there are two main parts of our ceremony this evening. If you've done a burning bowl before, you know that. Um, let me just move this ahead. So first you'll be guided through a process of releasing um, the energy of all of the experiences, the emotions, the limiting beliefs um, from the past, not just this past year, but really your past, this lifetime, past lives, whatever it is that's ready to go, we just offer up for it to be released. And you'll have time to write down the things that you wanna let go of. So there's some things that you'll be very conscious about wanting to let go of and other things that maybe you won't be so conscious of. But together we'll energetically burn them or transmute them actually through the transformative power of the violet flame of Saint Germain. And I'll explain more about that and how it works <laughs> uh, a little as we get closer to that part of the ceremony. And then following the releasing portion, we'll move into a time of contemplation where you will be able to consider all the different areas of your life and envision your ideal future into 2021 and beyond. There'll be an opportunity to write down the ideas and the desires that you wanna call in and co-create. So if you don't have pen and paper handy, this would be a great moment to uh, go grab those for yourself now. Um, and if you wanted to bring something that maybe you forgot, like I just did, I realized I left my ting shots upstairs. <laughs> this would be a great time to grab some, a candle or some um, crystals or feathers or stones, 
uh, anything that you might have special to make the place that you're in special. And I'm gonna um, excuse myself for one moment to go get my tinkshaws. <laughs> All righty. So before we actually begin the, cere the actual ceremony, I'd like to share some thoughts really just about the power of releasing and envisioning. Um, you know, the sacred act of releasing the past and envisioning the future is important to mark all different points uh, during our lifetimes, especially as we and one year and begin a new year, but also during the year at different times, such as the new moons, the full moons, eclipses and solstices. And it's especially important today as we end this very chaotic and tumultuous year of 2020 and step into the new consciousness that 2021 represents. So just speaking about that consciousness for a moment, you may be aware that you know, from a cosmic or astrological perspective, the grand conjunction that also happened on the solstice really opened the door to a really um, very significant cycle, energy cycle for us to move into. So for the past 200 years, Jupiter and Saturn have been aligned predominantly with earth signs that have to do more with the physical, right? Manifesting in the physical world building a lot, moving forward. But this year um, on the solstice and this grand conjunction, Jupiter and Saturn aligned in the air sign of Aquarius. And air signs have very different energy. They're about new beginnings. They're thoughts, you know, moving very quickly and lots of new ideas and new beginnings. Think of this as sort of um, a young maiden. When I think of the, the different uh, signs, air is um, representative of the maiden, full of new ideas, you know, and for women in particular. And then, then we have um, the other signs that follow mother, queen, and crone. So this is a time of um, new beginnings. And it was the same, it was the same astrological um, conjunction as what happened around the birth of Jesus, right? So this when we when when Saturn and Jupiter came together, they actually look like that Christmas star that the Magi uh, followed to find the Christ child. And I love that imagery at the end of this year because it sort of speaks to a harbinger of a new birth, right? Of something new, some higher energy that's gonna that's gonna really uh, help us move into a higher vibration in this year of 2021. So this grand con great conjunction in Aquarius propels us further into the age of Aquarius, which actually started a little while ago, but it'll give us a focus more toward the collective energy, um, more toward community-based projects um, and technology will actually be favored over than physical buildings. But more importantly, on a deeper level, the grand conjunction uh, will allow us to see the energies around this, that we are truly all connected. And I think, you know, in a, in a very strange way, COVID actually has done that for us as well. It has certainly shown us without a shadow of a doubt that we are all connected, no matter where we're from, where we live, what religion, what nationality, what politics, how old or young we are, we are all one in terms of how we are uh, impacted by the universe and you know, divine source. So keeping that in mind, um, as we go through the ceremony uh, this evening, I'm gonna invite you to be especially aware of your own intuitive voice, the part of you that knows what it will serve you to let go of, 
and what your heart and soul are calling you to step into. So choose this opportunity to let go, to release and lay down anything that keeps you from shining your brightest light, your Christ star in the world. Choose tonight to become a conscious co-creator of your most brilliant expansive self so that you can serve the world according to your deepest joy and your highest purpose even if you're not sure what that is yet, we just set that intention. <clears throat> Your intention is enough. Spirit will do the rest. And all of this will continue to unfold into the days and months and years to come. I also want to take a moment to point out that there is a significant difference in the energy of a burning bowl ceremony, which we are doing, and what we typically think of as setting New Year's resolutions, right? So, you know, resolutions are generally about giving something up, right? Or promising to do something out of a sense of guilt or expectation, maybe swap with God, I'll do this if you give me that, right? <laughs> An obligation or a should, we're shoulding all over ourselves. Um, but tonight in the burning ball ceremony is a very different energy where we'll be taking time to drop deeply into our hearts, to listen to your own divine guidance, to allow that which wants to be released and that which wants to be created to be revealed to you, right? So it's gonna bubble up from inside of you. It's not something in the outer world that you think you have to do or not do. It's a process not of the cognitive or egoic mind, but from a deep knowing from the heart and the soul. And when you intentionally and willingly let go of the things from your past that no longer serve you, <clears throat> spirit will assist you in healing and clearing that energy from your mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual bodies. So the intention that you set for 2021 are going to be anchored in through these actions of meditation and then writing. And this creates a sacred contract with the universe. When you set the intention and you write it down, you're, you're telling the universe, this is what I am willing to do. This is what I am open to. <clears throat> so together with everyone else gathered here in this sacred space, our prayers and our intentions are literally grounded deep into the earth and broadcast far into the cosmos. We become one with the, with, with the rhythm of the universe, releasing and receiving, expanding and contracting, right? As, as the universe ebbs and flows. So in that spirit of releasing and creating from our deep heart space, recognizing the presence of spirit in this space, let us begin. And here we, ha we have my beautiful Ting Shaws. Just allow the sound and the vibration begin to move through your field. Relaxing and aligning your nervous system your energy body. Bringing your awareness right into this space and this time. As we move forward. Let us pray. Dear sweet spirit, in this time of transition, of ending and beginning, of cycles and seasons, we call upon your presence within our hearts and invite your guidance during this ceremony. We ask that you send your breath of life into our hearts to ignite our inner light and help us to discern what is ours to release and what is ours to call in in the year ahead. 
Help us to put our ego minds aside and allow our hearts to lead in this sacred time and through this sacred practice. Amen. So now we'll move into this time of releasing where you'll have the opportunity to let go of your mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, any of the energy that feels out of alignment, that feels ready to go, that feels discordant. This is the opportunity now to release anything that you're ready to let go of. I'm going to invite you to stay in your heart as we go into the writing process. And in order to do that, I'm going to do a short exercise of the heart brain coherence with you, which I know some of you know. Um, and it, it's just a really nice way to drop in and get even more quiet as you move into this writing time. So with eyes closed, once again, <clears throat> placing one or both hands gently over your heart, bringing your awareness to your breath, perhaps even imagining that your breath is moving in and out right through your heart. If it's helpful, you might even imagine your breath like a wave moving gently up onto the beach on the inhalation and then being pulled back out into the water with the exhalation. And staying with that gentle flow of breath. As I introduce a few high vibration words here, words that will begin through their higher frequency to light up what is called the enlightenment circuit part of your brain. Gratitude, appreciation, joy, compassion, and love. Gratitude, appreciation, joy, compassion, and love. Just allowing those words and their vibrational frequency to flow through your body, perhaps imagining every cell in your body just soaking up the high vibration. Again, perhaps imagining a flower turning its face to the sun to soak up the sun's rays or a sponge soaking up the water and expanding. And just staying with that nice, easy flow of breath for another few moments. And then whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes and begin to write down the things that you would like to let go of. Just spend the next three or four minutes I'll let you know when there's just about a minute or so left. So just take this time to begin your writing. Thank you. 
All right, we'll just take another 30, 45 seconds here to bring your writing to a close. Okay, so just finish up your writing now for the releasing part of our ceremony. And we'll move into the symbolic burning <clears throat> or transmuting of that which you want to release. So these are some images um, of the violet flame. It, You'll, you'll find lots of different images of them um, if you search on the internet. But it's, it's a real thing. I know when I first heard of the violet flame, um, I had no idea <laughs> what it was or how it worked. Um, but I had a friend who used it all the time and I got interested. And uh, I've discovered that a violet flame is actually a divine gift. It's a tool for everyone. 
and it was given to us by the Ascended Master, Saint Germain. And it's a sacred fire of sorts that exists in a higher or etheric dimension. So it's sort of quantum physics, if you will. But it, the violet flame is real. And I invite you to use it in your day-to-day -day life. Certainly, you know, you can use it in any kind of a situation like this where you're doing any writing or releasing. But even, you know, in a moment, if there are heavy, dense energies or you're feeling a lot of emotion around something, you can always call in the violet flame um, to support and assist you in transmuting the energy because it's like spiritual alchemy in action. So just as alchemy is said to turn lead into gold, the ultimate purpose of the violet flame is to turn the physical uh, dense human body into the divine crystalline body. Um, its action is to transmute denser feelings, <clears throat> actions, deeds, old karma into a higher vibrational frequency, um, which helps us prepare for this ascension process that we're in. I'm, I'm not gonna say a lot about the ascension process now, but it's my belief that everything we've experienced this year, as we have seen these systems and institutions um, that have grown so out of balance, uh, I believe with the egoic masculine energy over the years, they're all collapsing and falling apart as part of this ascension process for us to create a new earth to bring more of the divine feminine energy and to balance out what has been out of balance and built from a, a place of greed um, or power over so that we can create a world that's more cooperative and harmonious as we talked about a moment ago in the age of Aquarius. So ascension literally means becoming a divine human also known as a Christed being. You know, Jesus's last name was not Christ. <laughs> he, was, he was a Christed being, meaning he had reached a level of consciousness um, that was a very, very high vibration, but it's not unique to Jesus. There are other master teachers who have reached that level of consciousness, um, and it is actually accessible to every one of us who has come to earth in, you know, and uh, into this, this physical realm, but ultimately at our um, most essential self, our authentic essence is as this being of light, the spark of divine. So you can use the violet flame in perfect harmony with any belief system you may have. It's not specific to any religion. Uh, it's a neutral tool with absolutely no conditions attached to it. So enough, enough discussion of what it is. Let's go ahead and just uh, move it into practice. So once again, I'm gonna just invite you to close your eyes and I will just walk you through the process of using the violet flame to burn away and transmute the heavier, denser energies of the things that you want to release. So you've seen the picture of the violet flame. So just imagine now, visualize or even just pretend that there is a ball of violet fire above your head. And again, if you're not visual, just say that it's there. Just imagine it, just intend it, and that will create it energetically. You can ask your higher self, Saint Germain, any of the ascended masters, guides, or angels to assist you if there, you know, is a being, a, a higher being who you uh, feel connected to. But once you imagine that uh, violet fire above your head, just ask that that ball of fire come down into your body through your crown chakra, right, right through the top of your head. And as it comes in, just almost allow, you know, imagine it as liquid light filling every cell, every space, every organ, every ligament, every fluid, every tendon, every, every space, every speck uh, of your physical body, all the nooks and crannies in the brain, right? 
just imagine that beautiful violet flame fire light moving through your entire system. And once you sense that that flame is present within your body from you know the bottoms of your feet right up through the top of your head, ask it to begin to also come out from your heart chakra. So that could be in the front of you or behind you or both, right? Your heart chakra um, extends through the body. So there's an opening in the front and an opening behind. And imagine this beautiful violet flame, this violet fire beginning to move out through your heart into the space around your body that you might call your aura or your energy field. So if you're not familiar, if you imagine, if you put your hands out um, and just imagine the distance to where your hands are extending all around your body like a big bubble, right? Imagine that this is your energy field. This is your sacred space and invite the violet flame to begin to spin around and encircle um, this energy field outside of your body so that it's filling and encompassing your mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies as well as your physical. Your physical is the most dense of your bodies. Your mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies are lighter than your physical body, which is why your physical body is the last thing to feel anything that's discordant um, or out of alignment because it moves through those other bodies first. So inviting now the violet flame that's circling around your energy field to transmute everything that you wish to be changed or eliminated from your life including anything that you put on your list, but also perhaps um, anything and everything that you may not even be aware of that might be standing in the way of your personal ascension process or of you becoming a Christed being. So again, even if it's something that is not in your conscious awareness, you can invite that to be transmuted by the violet flame. And when I'm using the violet flame, I also like to add to please transmute this, you know, heavy or discordant energy from all dimensions, on all levels, through all time and space, past, present, and future, so that it covers really everything, right? It covers this lifetime and anything else that we may not be aware of. And then finally, the last step in this process is to ask the violet flame to change any of this negative dense energy that's being released into divine light energy. We know that energy doesn't disappear can't go away, it can't be deleted, right? But it can be transmuted, it can be changed through the violet flame, through um, higher density into higher light. So we're not just sort of <clears throat> throwing our toxic waste out into the atmosphere, if you will. Um, we are inviting the violet flame to really burn it up and transmute it into higher vibrating energy, neutral energy that can then just be utilized as energy is. So I'm gonna just give you a minute or so um, to finish your own process if you're still in the midst of this process with the violet flame. And then when you feel complete, I'll just invite you to repeat uh, to yourself, I release and I let go 
of these things that no longer serve me. I give them over to spirit, grateful for the lessons I've learned from their presence in my life, now fully ready to release them in gratitude and knowing that all is well. Hmm, so let's just take a breath here for a moment. As we come back together now, having completed the releasing phase of our ceremony, our process, taking a breath, Refocusing as we move forward now into the second part of the service. And as I mentioned, this is the part where you will consciously and intentionally create that which you want to manifest into your life in 2021 or even further out into the future. You can do this however you want. Before we go into the actual process, um, I'm going to just uh, make a suggestion, which um, is simply that there's a couple different ways. We're gonna, we are gonna be, after a little visualization, we'll be doing some writing again with the, with the things that you want to create in your life. And you can um, do this a couple of different ways. You can simply write a list as things come to you and that's perfectly fine. If you want to get a little fancier with it, you can write this actually like a love letter to yourself, where you would really you would start with the words "Dear Beloved" and then insert your name. And your first line would start, "I am so grateful and happy that." And then you would continue to write the things that you are wanting to. Uh, call in as though they're already present. So almost like in the past tense, like they're already here. And in writing this way, you literally become the author, the authority of your new life. You are calling it in, you are declaring it, and you are affirming it as already having been manifested. And then whether you choose to use the list or the letter, um, you might close it by saying something like this or something greater because our human mind is very limited. And when we include this or something greater, we always allow space for spirit to work its magic because as we know, <laughs> spirit or the universe or source or the law of attraction, whatever wording you might use, is a giant sorting mechanism that brings together all of the cooperative components for the things that you are wanting to create in your life. And um, it can do that in a way much greater than we can do it with our limited conscious mind. So with that in mind, we're just gonna take another moment to close eyes again. So we can settle back in. And do a little bit of this heart brain coherence. We're sort of already in this space, but just to bring us back. Once again, allowing the Sound and the vibration of the Ting Shaws to align your energy, calm your nervous system, focus your mind. Again, placing one or both hands gently over your heart and beginning to slow your breath. Again, perhaps using that imagery of the wave moving in and out through your heart. 
or just counting, allowing your inhalation to be drawn to five or six seconds. And then back to the exhalation, also for a count of five or six seconds. Just staying with that slow, easy breath, bringing to mind the high vibration words, gratitude, appreciation, joy, love, compassion. Allowing again, the energy of those words to circulate through And gently allowing your eyes to float open on the next wave of breath. And from this space of heart-centered relaxation, inviting spirit to enter, guiding you into a deep knowing of what your soul already knows. The desires to create in different areas of your life including work or career, relationship, health, finances, your spiritual or personal life, fun or leisure, just opening up to be inspired as to where you may want more joy, more abundance, more peace or prosperity in the year ahead. Taking a few moments now to listen to that inner voice, formulating positive and affirmative statements about the things that you want, writing them in positive terms, not negative, allowing your deepest desires to be expressed knowing without a shadow of a doubt that you are worthy and deserving of everything that your heart desires. And again, you can write this as a list or as a letter to yourself. And the words are on the screen here if you wanna take another look. And I'll give you four minutes or so for this part.
Alrighty, about another 45 minutes to finish up your writing. If you've already finished writing, just take a moment to reread what you've written, making any last additions, making sure you are declaring and affirming that which you want to create as all as though it's already manifested. All righty, bringing this portion to an end. <clears throat> I would invite you, um, if you have more writing to do, you can certainly do that later. But uh, whenever you finish your writing, I would encourage you to uh, fold up your paper and put it away someplace um, where you will remember where it is, and then either set an alarm on your phone, or if you use a calendar like I do, still a handwritten calendar, write in your calendar at the end of June to take your um, vision, your letter to yourself, or your list, to take it out after six months or so, and just see um, where you're at in terms of the things that you have uh, called in here this evening. It's so we, I always um, think it's kind of a fun thing to do. You might want to, at that point, sort of recommit to some things, or maybe you'll find that something has shifted and what you wrote uh, here today doesn't feel as relevant or significant. Um, but it's always fun and interesting to see uh, six months out what you wrote here in this sacred space. So we are uh, coming to the end of our time together. And I'd like to share a beautiful prayer with you um, by Tosha Silver. This is actually from a book called Change Me Prayers. There are so many different prayers in the book. And this one just sort of jumped out at me as being really um, very sweet and appropriate um, for this evening. And you can see it on the screen. It says, change me, open me, make me receptive to the unexpected. May I receive all that is meant for me over these next weeks and beyond. Let me know my own worthiness to receive. Let me play with these new ideas as an adventure. And let me embrace what happens according to your will. I am yours. You are mine. We are one. All is well. I love that last. I am yours. You are mine. We are one all is well. And with those beautiful affirming words, we, uh, actually, we come to the end of the formal uh, burning bowl ceremony. I want to thank you all for sharing your time and your energy with me and for the rest of the group. It really does make a difference when we do this work together, right? Every act of personal healing is an act of global healing. So please know that your energy, your intention, your work, your visioning here um, this afternoon, this evening, really moves forward uh, the entire collective. 
And I'll invite you to stay on. I'm just going to play uh, one last song um, and I'll, I'll come back to the whole screen so I can see you all before, uh, before we go. I'm going to be playing one of my favorite songs, which is Long Time Sun by Snotum Cower. So I'm gonna start that. I'm gonna stop the share and I will come back to see all your beautiful faces. All righty, I'm going to stop the recording.